As a viewer request, this um, this flow rhythm is for sorting data into ascending order and then reversing or sorting it into descending order. So I've decided to do this with a bubble sorts because I had one on the channel already. So here's our unsorted data as our list. I've done this with integers. It wouldn't be majorly difficult to convert it to strings. Um, this is my uh, bubble sort. So here I'm just printing out to prove it's unsorted. This is my bubble sort. So there's my bubble sort function. Nothing you haven't seen before. This bubble sort is already on the channel, so you can find out how to do that. Okay. And it prints it to prove it's sorted. And then I've got my reverse function. So reversing it is essentially putting it into descending order. So if I look at my reverse function, I pass into it the array that I want to sort. I get its size so I know how big it is. Make a new array as a temporary array um, for that one. And then this is all it is. We're going through the array, starting at the last item and going back. And then we're just copying one item from the end of the array to begin the other array. And then because we want to make that right permanent, remember this uh, where is it? This R list here. This is a local variable, so it only uh, only exists in here. We need to overwrite the data from the array we passed in, so it writes it back and can be seen in the main program. So this line here, this is just a for loop that's just copying the data from your R list, your now reverse list, back into the original list, so it can be returned back. And then back to our main, we're just printing out the reverse data to prove it's reversed. So let's have a, have a look at that. I'll put a breakpoint in so we can see what's going on. I'll put a breakpoint before the reverse. I shall run the code. Okay, let's get that to uh, one side so we can see both at the same time. And we want to see the data over here as well. So let's step through it. It goes to the reverse. You can see I've now created found it's five elements. One, two, three, four, five. So I've got my list there that's the right size. And you can see I'm taking the data from this one, pasting it into this one, but going backwards, so I end up with a 21 at the top. Okay. And then once I've done that, this is a local variable. It needs this data here needs replacing. So all I've got to do is take that and paste it there. Take that and paste it there. So that's what we do next. You can see it changing. Job done. And then I can output the reverse list. And you can see now ordered descending. So just run that and there we go so I'll just show you the code so you can see it so if I maximize this window there's my main just scroll down I'll take that breakpoint out it's not needed now there's my bubble sort which is exactly the same as the bubble sorts on the channel so just copy that one and there's my reverse that's going to make it descending order. Okay, the first bit's actually doing the descending, and then this bit is overwriting it because remember, with Flowgrithm we can't return an array, but what we can do, or what it does do, is any array that's passed in is passed in as a pointer. So if you change the original array within local code it will impact the original array. Hope that helps. Don't forget to like and subscribe and if it was really useful buy me a coffee.